Hi, everybody. This is Jeremiah with the San Diego HSMAI, and I have the pleasure of talking with Doug Kennedy, Kennedy today, president of the Kennedy Training Network. Hi, Doug. Thanks so much for making time for us. Thanks, Jeremiah. I appreciate you reaching out and setting this up for us. Now, this is very cool. And this is going to show hoteliers how to turn those calls that they get to their front desk from casual inquiries into solid reservations. So I think this is really, really good for our community. Um, just a little bit about Doug, for those of you who don't read um, or haven't seen his, his publications in the press. Um, he, he puts these out quite often. He's got a great newsletter. I definitely recommend you subscribe. You should subscribe. But Doug has been in the hospitality industry really all his life. Uh, just recently, he wrote a book uh, that I really loved called So You Really Like Working With People. And this is his story of, of growing up and, and learning service ex excellence. As, I just as, as a kid. You know, I am a sales trainer. And so, thank you, yeah, by the way. So you really love working with people. I love that. Actually, one of my uh, Amazon reviews. So thank you. <laughs> You're back. No, I really enjoyed it. And it shows how you have developed yourself into a real world, world class sales trainer. Um, nowadays, Doug trains with clients all over the United States, all over the world, really. He spends about 45 weeks a year on the road doing training. Um, in San Diego, for example, his clients are Bartell Hotels and also the Evans Hotels. Uh, in the past, he's done consulting with Lowe's Coronado and the Hotel Del Coronado. And uh, all this experience has really showed him how to, to speak and how to teach on subjects such as hotel excellence, uh, group sales, and also he does training for upselling at your front desk. Now, Doug, can you tell us a little bit about your experience and your involvement with HSMAI over the years? Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons when you reached out, I was very happy to contribute to your, um, I guess, going to go out to your newsletter and your blog for the HSMAI San Diego, but I found HSMAI when I worked in hotel sales in the mid 1980s, when I was a lost sales sales guy in the basement of the Doral Golf Resort without any training. So I actually joined the Broward County, Florida chapter. Later I became the vice president of education. Um, when I was still a hotelier, I was just a member and then I became the VP of education when I started in the training business. And I was a very active member through the 90s for HSMAI. In fact, my previous training company actually uh, did a lot of HSMAI University uh, in-person classes. And then in 2004, one of my biggest, most uh, accomplishments I'm the most proud of was I was a part of an initiative with Bob Gilbert and a few other key people that he asked me to come on as the, uh, the administrator, the paid administrator, to start the revenue optimization group. So we got that going from 2004 to 2007. It's actually a, a huge success now of course their conference every jump but start yeah, out in the chapter just really like that year. so no that's that's really taken off i i know i enjoyed it so since then since 1989 you went out on your entrepreneurial way and you've been doing tons of training uh you established the kennedy training network in 2006 so that's 12 years of helping hotels improve their revenues through call sales uh, and upsells um, so in today's webinar, we're really specifically going to show that people are still calling. They're, they're still um, reaching out and, and looking for answers. And if the front desk staff or whoever wh who's, whoever's answering the phone, if they don't know how to talk to them correctly, you're, you're losing the sale to the OTA, even though they reached out to you. So that's what we're going to go over today. Um, I'm going to turn off my camera. Uh, nobody okay. wants to look at the top of my head. Uh, while I'm while I'm writing, uh, but I will be here just to uh, field questions. And anybody at any time, please please enter your questions in the chat. They're all private, so ask away. You know, there's no such thing as a dumb question. And let's let's start off here. Let's do uh, this. Yes. So the obvious question: Who are today's callers, and why are they still calling? Hey, that sounds like a great name for a webinar. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's a great first, it's a great first uh, rhetorical question because you know it's very interesting because where I'm at now I've been doing reservations training it was very big in the 90s um, my previous company had seven trainers on the road we had about 45 people total working a lot of those in telephone mystery shopping because more people everybody called to make a hotel reservation back then unless you were 
you know, part of a group that came in on a rooming list or perhaps a wholesaler. But in the early 2000s, had you surveyed marketing people and said, you know, and, and actually, I always use this story. Um, Jeremiah, I don't know if you're, a, if anybody watching is an H.G. Wells fan, not Orson Wells, oh, yeah. H.G., the original fiction writer in his time machine. He had, you know, the time machine was one of his first, he was one of the first people to write about that, I believe. And if you took an H.G. Wells time machine, took somebody from the two th early 2000s, brought them forward to today, showed them all the information we have online. We have websites, we have virtual tours, we have 3D floor plans, we have a ton of reviews on TripAdvisor and also on Booking.com and uh, about a million other places. We have more images than ever before. And if you would have asked them then to go back into the year 2000 and predict, would anybody still call in 2018? They would have said no way. You know, but the fact is, people still call. Now, of course, it varies by your market segment. Uh, if you are a resort, if you're in the any kind of non-standardized lodging, you're getting the most calls. Now, we also have branded hotels. Um, you mentioned some of my clients, Bartel Hotels has a, a Best Western. They have a Best Western, um, I believe it's called Prime, the Best Western Collection Properties. They have um, also a Days Inn, and they have a Holiday Inn on the Bay. They get a lot of calls, but also branded hotels get calls. But I think especially when you get into an independent resort or a lot of my clients are out non-traditional lodging. So higher rates, longer stays, more confusing room types. Uh, some of my clients, the Castle Hill Inn is my smallest client, has 31 rooms up in Newport, Rhode Island. However, I think it's something like seven or eight different room categories out of 31 rooms. So people still call and they, they do still call it the brands. But. Um, you know, the problem is a lot of brands have lost a passion. They've lost focus for voice. Now, if you only look at voice booking, voice bookings versus web bookings, you think the web is doing the heavy lifting. But one of one of my articles and thank you for plugging those I actually write three a month. If you go to Kennedy Training Network dot com, you can subscribe to my newsletter in the upper right corner. One of them I wrote was how to how to look at the interplay between voice and online. So you take some of those web bookings, you plug in the phone number to your long distance bill or your call tracking system, and you're going to see those people are calling too. Maybe they call prior to booking or maybe they call after. So I guess uh, I kind of still didn't answer your question, <laughs> but I, I wanted to start off by talking about the, uh, the fact that today, surprisingly, you know, we have a lot of people still calling across every segment. And, 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 and it's kind of funny because one of the starts of my training classes um, and I know people are thinking, oh, my gosh, the guy has no life. I'm home every weekend just about. But I leave out on Tuesday. I train Wednesday, Thursday, sometimes Friday. Usually I come home Friday or Saturday. My first question is, hey, everybody in my class, do you ever have them call up and say, hello, where are you? Are you at work? Oh, good. They want to know where are you exactly? <laughs> now, yeah. oh, I'm at work today, sir. Where are you exactly? And uh, they want to know if you're selling San Diego, that you're in San Diego and you're at the hotel. Or if you're at a call center, you better be trained. We do a lot of call center training where they're not actually there. So um, I guess you got to ask your question again. <laughs> Who are the callers? <laughs> well, well, they, they still call because I, I really think that that human to human connection is critical. Like like you said, where are you? It really means yes. do you really, really understand the property? Yes. Um, but unfortunately, as you as you noted in one of your articles, a lot of times people pick up the phone and they just see their their job as being website support. They're just there to that's you that's know, kind of where we're at. Yeah, and they're they're just there to web to be website support. So what how do we move beyond the the place where somebody says, Hey, I just want to check the rate? Um, so how do we move beyond that to create a real what? human community? Let's jump into that. And I'm going to segue in answering that. I'm going to segue back to who are the callers and why do they call? But right. what happens today when you call most places, they treat a reservation inquiry. And this is no fault of the reservation agent or the front desk associate, by the way. They haven't been trained. They haven't been asked what to do. But more often than not, they treat that inquiry as if it was a tech support call. So in other words, website search support. The person calls up, hey, I'm planning my trip. I got some questions. And they say, 
When is it? How many nights? How many people? How many beds? Got a pen? Here's the rates. Okay. So they tell them nothing more than what they could have looked, seen online. Sometimes the caller says, okay, that sounds good, but um, I see this uh, deluxe. What about this deluxe category or this specialty suite? Very often they say, have you been online? Because we got this great little website. And if you click on it, you can search the little tab that says accommodations. And there's pictures. It's, it's kind of funny because sometimes they actually coach them. Um, so that's what we don't want to do. All right. So what we do want to do, and, and I'll get to that in, in a minute uh, regarding questioning. What exactly do you want to do tactically? But mm -hmm. first thing we want to do, leaders, talk to your agents about this. If you're a frontline agent watching this, first thing we want to do is understand why people call. So four reasons. First of all, you get the people that just want to make a reservation. I call these the multitaskers. Now, a lot of people are pressing on their smartphone, they're searching these days, they don't bother to use a desktop, laptop, or even a tablet. They look online, they see your phone number, they click to call. That person just wants to make a reservation. It's funny, I ask agents, you know, do you ever hear people multitasking? More than once, recently, I hear them saying, you know, I say, where, where do they call from? Oh, we get moms calling in the minivan, going through the drive-thru at McDonald's, okay? <laughs> Apparently, yeah. this, is, this is a new thing. But I remember when my kids were little, yeah, I think I actually made to-do lists for long drives up the Florida Turnpike, you know. So they just want to call and book, all right? So number two, they are all about the price. And that goes back to your question about the OTA shoppers. And they call up and literally say, hi, I just want to check the price. And a lot of agents say, okay, well, they, they want to check the price. Mm -hmm. The boss comes by, the manager says, hey, Jeremiah, why didn't you ask, ask for the booking? And they say, oh, well, they just wanted to check a price. They really believe they just want to check a price. So mm -hmm. I have to say, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, do you think people are just curious what you charge? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's another reason, but we've got to engage them. The last two reasons are the people that either are confused by online reviews. And, and if the trip is important enough, in other words, if it's leisure in San Diego, you get a lot of leisure. I'll be doing leisure myself there when I go back to train Evans Hotels at Catamaran and uh, Torrey Pines for their call center. Um, but and we're actually staying over the weekend. So when someone's calling and they're going to be business but turning into leisure or they're coming to San Diego for a vacation, they're going to have um, a lot more research time. And the more important the trip is, the more likely they are to read reviews. And if they read reviews, the more likely they are to call. Now, they will not say, hi, right, I read your review and I have a question about room 201. I hear it's noisy. But they will say, I have a question. Are your rooms noisy? Hmm. And uh, so and then the final reason. So they're just want a book. They're multitasking. They're all about the money because they just want the best value. They are confused by reviews. Or the last one is they're simply overwhelmed with choice. And you think about, you know, years ago, not that many years ago, at least to me, when people actually had directories and hotel catalogs, they would get the San Diego Tourism Board's catalog of hotels, and they would call three or four places. Today, at a few clicks, you're literally looking at dozens or really in the hundred range of options. So they're overwhelmed, they're confused, or they're all about the price, or they just want a book. And, and that goes back to, you know, understanding who they are, okay? And then that kind of leads us to the tactical part, okay? Which is what do we have to do? So what do we have to do? We gotta ask better questions, and we gotta tell stories. And I don't wanna keep going without taking some questions or kicking it back to you, mm -hmm. but that gets into the tactical part of what do we need to ask and what do we need to say? Perfect. Um... I'll follow up on that because better questions and stories are that that's fascinating. Um, but you just said people that are multitasking, they're looking for competitive rates there. It's an important trip or they're confused or they're overwhelmed by choices that pretty much describes everybody except for the person who knows it all. Yeah. Right. So that's the majority of, of people out there. Um, so that's, that's why voice is so important. And, yeah. Now I would love to get into, you know, how do we ask better questions? How do we um, tell stories? That that's fascinating. Please, please go for it. Yeah. So my buddy Rob, my uh, as my wife says, my friend, singular, because you know I don't have that many left. 
from childhood, but she's got a whole long list. But my friend Rob, he's on the road. He's actually in the technology training business, and he is a Hilton guy. Sorry, Marion. Actually, <laughs> I think it might be his company. But he stays with Hilton Honors. He is actually doing a project here in South Florida. He's at the Hampton Inn, okay? But in March, he's bringing his wife and his uh, senior, uh, junior in high school son down, and they're staying over, okay? So he's usually books on his app for the nearest Hampton Inn or Hilton Garden. But for that trip, I know he's researching, and he's asking me questions about this one versus that one, and I'm pretty sure he's going to call. All right, so I'm sorry. What was your question? <laughs> um, More so somebody says, somebody says uh, I'm just calling to check a rate. That's a very specific question. How do you lead it into telling stories and asking better questions to, 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 to get them going? So out of the inquiry calls, and we have reconfirmed calls. We have cancellation calls. We have information calls. Um, and by the way, a lot of that is what's dropping. If you see call volume dropping, a lot of times it's the person that no longer calls to ask what the taxi fare is because they have an Uber app. Um, mm -hmm. But the people that remain that are calling, okay, you have, a, I don't know, maybe 90%, 85%. Start off with one or two questions. Do you have rooms? How much are your rooms? Or what are your rates? So they're usually going to ask those two questions. And that's it. They're not going to say, hey, Jeremiah, would you please convince me to stay at your hotel? You know, so we have to engage them. If your right. website search report, you say, how many nights, what are your dates, how many people, how many nights, okay, here's the price, you want to book it? Okay, if that's all we do, we might as well be Siri, Cortana, or Alexa, because they will take our jobs. But what we want to do instead is something they can't do, which is handle out-of-the-box questions. So we want to get the dates, number of people. How many beds? We want to click enter. And I always say in my training, when you click enter, that is your mental prompt to say the following. As I'm checking those dates, Jeremiah, are there any questions I can answer for you about our location or our amenities? And that is a nice way of saying, who are you and why did you call me and why did you not book online? <laughs> Doesn't that sound better? That's that's much better. Um, I love I love that. Can you can you please repeat that because so, it sounds Kennedy, like such a great tip. I'm I'm kind of going into character for my training, Doug Kennedy, the trainer. But you know we got to try to make it fun and make people smile. Yeah. But what you got to do is say, as I'm checking those rates, or as I'm checking your dates for those rates, as I'm checking, are there any questions I can answer for you about our location, about our amenities? Okay, you can have your own version of that. Pretty much like, what questions do you have for me? Now, half the time, the person is shocked that somebody actually asked them this. Because the last person didn't ask this. Probably the next place they call is not going to ask this. So half the time, they say, no, I'm good, no questions. But about half, half a minute, two minutes later, they say, you know what? Actually, I do have a question. You're right there at the hotel, right? And then they start to engage you with opinion questions. Is it nice? Is this room worth it? Um, is this extra uh, value added rate option worth it, etc. So half the time they don't ask a question, but they might later. The other half the time they actually have a question and they will say, yeah, actually I do have a question. Because if you don't ask, you're sitting there staring at your screen while it's searching. And I don't care if you got opera or whatever you got for your property management system, you know, they're slow. <laughs> So you might as well say, hey, click, enter, next, whatever it is, as I'm checking availability, do you have any questions for me? And that opens it up to a conversation and moves it away from a transaction of website search support. That one question right there is the, is the difference between just doing website search support, like you said, and actually connecting with somebody. And that makes a huge difference to revenues, I'm sure. In, in your experience, what, what are the differences in ADR or, or RevPAR for, for actual phone calls versus websites? Is there a difference? Let me tell you, there can be. There may not be if all you're doing is quoting the price. Now, it's interesting. The, in my consulting business, I, I, I'm not a consultant. I'm a trainer. As part of the training, I do consulting. So when I have clients that ask me to come in and take a look at their operation, I actually start out with doing uh, an assessment. Most of my clients hire me to train. While I'm there, I ask them some questions about their reporting. So they really need to make sure their people have been trained to upsell. 
and measure it. So let me give you some tips. And, and by the way, to answer your question, if the manager, the leader, does the following, they will deliver a higher ADR. So number one, show them the rooms. <laughs> now, I cannot tell you how many hotels, I, now I train call centers. It's a little harder. But if I don't mind plugging Bartell, Bartell Hotels, which has the, uh, they have the Humphreys Half Moon Inn, they have the Dana on Mission Bay, they have the Days Inn, SeaWorld, they have uh, the Holiday Inn, Bayside. I don't, now I gotta name them all, I don't wanna leave any out. Pacific Terrace, um, and they have the Best Western I, um, Island Palms. Hopefully I got them all GMs. But we actually put them on a bus. They're at a call center in San Diego. We put them on a bus, we take them there, okay? And they've been with me four years now. Um, their numbers, there's actually at my website an article I wrote with their permission last year about how they've increased revenue, increased revenues. Uh, about half of the gain is on conversion, that they're converting more calls. The other half is on ADR because they're talking more about the rooms. So step number one, show your people the rooms. Now that's different. Uh, that's harder because it's a call center. I actually train hotels, Jeremiah, where the person sitting in the reservation office hasn't seen a room since the day they started two years ago on employee orientation, you know, when you do the walkthrough mm. with like 20 new hires from every department. So show them the rooms. Number two, to measure it, look at revenue per booking per agent. Okay, so take your total revenue sold, which is a metric a lot of people look at, but divide that by the number of bookings that agent made, and then compare agent A, B, C, and D, and you will find that um, you know you start a little competition there and for, you'll find right away some people are already doing it on their own and then um, you start to make people pay attention and you know they'll deliver for you if you're asked them so yes you can get a higher ADR by voice but you may not now if you've not trained to it if you've not measured it and then of course incentivizing now some people have a per incident incentive for upselling so they give $5 to the front desk if you upsell the guest to a suite or a view room. And, you know, most of them don't want to do that in reservations because they are afraid that guest might have asked for the suite. So what you should be doing, and that's true, they may have. What you, They self-upsell. <laughs> Some people want to book the suite. But if what you should be doing is doing the incentive based on your revenue per booking numbers and make sure that people are increasing. So yes, you can deliver a higher ADR if you train your people on voice. And I, I really like how you give the suggestion of getting getting people to the rooms. Actually, hey, you know, you might have done a renovation recently and, yeah. and the, the call staff has no idea about it. Um, so get them to the rooms because a lot of times people are gonna call and they they might say something like, Oh, have you gone to our website? Have you checked out our rooms? And they're not able yeah. to tell a story about you really got to check out the corner suite because it gets this beautiful light in the afternoon. Yeah. And, and tell a personal story, right? That's tell the story of them enjoying the room. And 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 along that same note, the area. Um, a lot of times the people that work in the hotel, you know, I don't know about you, but when I worked, I lived over here and I worked over there. So I lived in Hollywood, Florida. I drove to the Doral, which is now called Doral, Florida. At the end of the day, I went back to Hollywood, you know, so I didn't even know what was in West Dade County. Uh, mm -hmm. So and, and yet again, the person who calls that wants that local authentic experience because they're a leisure guest or their weekend getaway that's coming over from Phoenix or uh, trying to think of your other feeder markets or up in the in the mountain areas of central California. And they had those questions, you know, by the way, is there a good restaurant? So, mm -hmm. you know, get them out in the neighborhoods, get them in the rooms. You're going to see more bookings. You're going to get higher rates, my friend. Excellent. Excellent. And um, I wanted to also ask about rates a little bit to step back. And yep. so somebody calls, they're, they're the multitasker. They're on, they're, they're, I'm looking at a price in Expedia right now that's a little lower than what you have on your website. Yes. Um, and maybe they haven't even decided on your hotel yet. So what do you right. say in those situations? All right. So again, if you haven't addressed this, you know, I, I've actually done training. I must say it's getting better in the last year or two, but I've done training, you know, where you ask the leader, 
the manager, um, so do people know that you want to convert those OTA shoppers? Oh, yeah, yeah. But then you ask the agents, you know, what happens when the guy says he's shopping on OTA? Well, some of them say, oh, well, we just tell them they can book it there if they want or whichever they prefer. And I actually have done, um, you know, two, two years ago, maybe when the brands were all doing book direct with us. I did a test. I write for Hotel News Now. By the way, I highly recommend Hotel News Now. Um, is a great publication by Star, S-T-R. Um, and I also recommend some others, hotelmarketing.com, Hotel Online, and uh, Hotel News Resource for hoteliers. All good. I, I happen to write for those, but I don't want to be unfair to any of my, my people. But for Hotel News Now, because they're read by a lot of the brand higher-ups and the investors, I did an, an a piece where I, at the time of Book Direct with the brand, I called up brand call centers and I got an agent on the phone and I was on Expedia or booking.com. And when they quoted their rate, I said, I see the same rate online when I did. By the way, they were out of parity a lot more than the revenue manager would like to admit. But when they were the same, I would ask them, okay, I see the same rate online. Pause. Two, three. Okay, thanks. Bye. And these were brand call centers in the middle of a brand initiative to book direct and save, and nobody told the call centers. Okay. Um, so I, 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 I would be surprised if it's any different. Now, I mean, brands, if you want to hire me, we have about 15 people doing telephone mystery shopping. Be glad to do that research for you. But you better try your own hotel. Hotel yours. Call up your own hotel. Try the same exercise. What we should be saying is when they say, I'm just checking a rate. Okay, as I'm checking availability, any questions for me? No, I'm good. Okay, here's the rate. All right, oh, actually, I do have a question. And you start to engage them a little bit. And then you say, okay, now that I've answered your questions, can I secure that for you? Now you have that person that was three clicks away from booking to the checkout in the shopping cart, okay? This says, you know what? That guy wants my business. That guy sounds really helpful. That, that woman sounds helpful. I'm, I'm gonna go with her. Um, now, if the rate is lower, make sure that your people can match it. Um, but don't just say, okay, we'll match it. So you gotta play the games. I'm giving you Doug, free Doug Kennedy KTN training tip. Um, man, instead of saying, uh, oh, the rate is $20 less on Expedia. Okay, well, first of all, they have to verify it, okay? And then they, they, they don't just wanna say, okay, we'll match it. You know, you have to verify it because maybe they're looking at advanced purchase, non-refundable. But once you match it and it is in fact lower, which hopefully is not happening, but if it is, you can say, you know what, let me check further. Put them on hold, count to five, pick it back up, say, you know what, here's what I can do. If we can lock this in for you now, I can match that rate. Okay, so you gotta make it seem like you're going above and beyond, okay? Um, I don't make my participants in the training classes lie and say, let me ask the manager if they're really not asking the manager. Just say, let me check further and either put them on hold briefly or just let the line go dead. You know, as you're talking, as you say, I'm sorry, not go dead, but just let the conversation cease for a moment. Let me check further. Hmm. OK, I'll tell you what I could do. If we can lock this in now, here's what I can do. Now, again, depending on your distribution, you know, um, you should be empowering your staff to, in those times, verify and match. And hey, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you to violate Expedia and OTA contracts, but if you can find a, a lower rate and help them qualify for it, my understanding is they require rate parity online. Okay, so we're talking about a voice channel here. So verify, match, empower your staff, give them the verbiage that if we lock it in now, here's what we can do. It, re it really is about that verbiage, right? If, yeah, that's if somebody the, doesn't have the go-to phrase, yeah. then they're gonna try to make it up on the spot. And that takes a couple extra seconds. And then the person says, uh, let me think about it. And it's gone. And it's gone, yeah. They're like, yeah, let me think about it. <laughs> okay, bye. Call you back. Right. No, no. Um, true story. True story. I was, you know, walking walking guests are always the best because you know they're going to book something, right? Oh, so yeah. I was up at a trade show in uh in Monterey and we walked into a hotel and 
said, okay, well, we need to book something. And the, and the guy behind the desk said, great. What you do is you go to hotelstonight.com. Oh, no. And, oh, no. And he said, <laughs> adding in so. so and by the way, so we did. Here's, the, here's the ironic thing. The, the guy probably yeah. thought he was being nice and helping you, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, let me, let me let you in on the insider story. Yeah. You know, I tell a story. I'm not going to go into it here, but I did the same thing when I started the front desk in Lexington, Kentucky growing up. I wanted to help that guest get the best deal. I would give discounts during the Kentucky Derby week. <laughs> you know, so I, I tell a funny story. That's actually how I learned the concept of revenue management from, I wouldn't say it was a write up, but it was probably pretty close to a verbal warning. Um, you know, I thought it was the right thing to do, but what I thought you were going to say was when the guest says, oh, 200, huh? I got hotel tonight here, and then they're not allowed to match that. So, you know, I know that's a low rate, and that, that one may involve some rate strategy questions based on how many times that happens. So I'm going to leave that one up to check with your revenue manager. But to me, I would have a serious debate at your hotel if we shouldn't go ahead and match it, you know, assuming there's no other guests around and there's some other, you know, you have to look at the, the lobby layout and how busy is it at this time, how many rooms are left, you know, so. I see. Interesting, interesting story though. Wait over there. <laughs> Imagine yeah. a business partner, like wait 10 minutes. My you company is paying, you know, of course I have my own company, but if I work for somebody else and time is of the essence, I mean, even it being my own company, if I'm going to save 10 bucks by waiting 10 minutes and I got to check in and go meet clients, put me in, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, shifting, shifting topics a little bit. Okay. Um, let's say a family is traveling and they really don't know what exactly they need. Uh, they don't know uh, if this hotel is by a park or anything like that. Yeah. Or, um, and then when they just call and they just say, I'm calling to check rates, how do you get into that conversation where you figure out what they need? What are some good, some good phrases to politely find out about their situation? That sounds like a San Diego question. <laughs> yeah. So whoever sent that over uh, is, is good because you have, you know, I think it's a heavy leisure city. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, I, I travel very frequently and uh, maybe once or twice I bring my, my uh, 18 year old son, my daughter's at college. We, she doesn't travel with us much or, you know, sometimes I'll bring my wife, but I'm doing it in San Diego um, because it's a great city. So now that person may say I'm coming with my husband on business. I'm on business. I'm bringing my husband. And what is there to do? That's pretty rare. But what you and what you want to do is start to unmask their story. So as I'm checking availability, any questions I can answer for you? And then we're, you gave me a family scenario, right? Yeah. Um, actually, I do have a question. We're coming out to San Diego with the kids. And uh, how far are you from the San Diego Zoo? Okay. So you could say, oh, first of all, a lot of people are like, uh, do you have MapQuest or Google Maps? But, you know, most people will say, oh, we're 15 minutes and uh, it's about five miles or whatever it is. Um, but then that you'd be answering their question. What you really want to do is unmask their story. A little bit further, you say, "Oh yes, it's a short drive to San Diego." Um, are you coming here on vacation? Really? Oh, have you been with? Have you been to San Diego before? How old are those kids? You know, and you might find out they're uh, I don't know three and five or thirteen and fifteen. Sometimes twenty three and twenty five. You know, people say they're bringing their kids, and you find out the kids are in their twenties or thirties. So we call this unmasking the story. Now, actually, I'm going to grab a prop. <laughs> You're calling to make a reservation. Hello, what are your dates? How many people? How many nights? I'm coming out on May the 3rd for three nights. Okay, we have a rate. You want to book it? Okay, thanks. I'll call around. Thanks. Bye. That's what we get. Okay. But if we ask questions, the person does. Some people call up, hey, I'm coming to San Diego. But a lot of people are like, hello, I'm coming to San Diego and I'm coming on business and I'm bringing my wife. Oh, wonderful, sir. Let me check those dates for you. How many, how many people? How many beds? What are your dates? Oh, wonderful. As I'm searching availability, are there any questions I have you have for me? Actually, I do have a question. And you can unmask their story. I used to carry this in my class, but some people think it's creepy. <laughs> but 
Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, KennedyTrainingNetwork.com, we actually have a video segment called Unmasking the Caller's Story, and we have the actors, you know, have the mask on a black curtain, and they have their story, and the reservation agent offline, off, uh, off screen, asks questions, and then you unmask their story. That's visually what I'm trying to say. You know, and then you find out, um, you find out there's a mom or dad is planning the trip because mom's working, you know, and he's a stay at home dad. I mean, um, you find out what the story is, you know, cool. and then you sell to that story. Well, use, using that mask, it really reminds me of the, uh, the theater, right? Happy, sad face. And yeah. it, seems, it seems like you use a lot of role playing in your training, yeah. uh, things yeah. like that. During role plays, there's always a complication. So what kind of complications have you taught your students to overcome to help help the hotel secure the reservations? Any any fun, strange examples you can give us? Uh, that's a good one. You know, a lot of times, of course, in role playing, you, uh, we actually structure our role playing. So it's actually skill rehearsal. And we do things like assign them a call story. Okay. Um, sometimes we have our KTN mystery shoppers call into the class live and they role play. Because if you just get, you know, you and I are working in a hotel, your front desk and I'm reservations and we sit down, we're going to make it into a big joke. Yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah, I'm coming there with my uh, my uh, therapy uh, boa constrictor. Or what was it? A, 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 what, Cockatoo uh, peacock. A peacock, I think recently and actually someone did. Maybe that's not so far fetched, but um, what we actually do is role play those things. But we also have a segment, and this is a good one for you to do, uh, listeners and, and viewers. Have them list out the challenges that they have, like of why people will not book now. Some of it relates to the process. Some relates to the price. So the price is where they say they're going to shop around or they're going to look online. So in that case, you want to give them the verbiage to say, well, you know, we have our Lowest available rates are always offered here. If you find something less, let me know. But why don't we lock it in now? You can always cancel up until 72 hours or 30 days. Okay, so it's it's a pro, it's a price thing. But sometimes it's product, price or process. Sometimes it's product. You know, well, oh, you're that far from the airport. Oh, or that far from the zoo. Oh, well, are you going to have any free time? Are you going to have a car? You know, are you familiar with Pacific Beach? Because I know you're here on business and you're staying over the weekend, but you really don't have to go down to the Gaslight District because here at Pacific Beach, you can step right out and imagine the weekend. You can go down to uh, Duck Dive. You can watch, do you rollerblade or no? Well, you can take a stroll along the Pacific Coast and imagine yourself not even going in the car, you know, mm -hmm. so... Now, on the other hand, if they have to be in one location A and you're in location Z, you know, but I think most people would agree better to lose the sale through being honest. But, you know, there's people who think San Diego is basically the gas lamp district, the zoo, and, uh, you know, maybe maybe a, a, across the Coronado Bridge. They don't even know what Pacific Beach is or La Jolla. That's so true. Um... You know, I've, I've only been to Ventura once, and I, I thought the only thing you see there was the pier, right? So you just pick up a magazine, you look at the one iconic location, and how do I get there? That's, you know, with without some good recommendations, well, that's that's all I have. Um, now, when you're doing this, this kind of training, um, you know, rates are always going up and down, like we yeah. talked about rate, rate parity. Um, what what if, for example, they are more much more expensive than their competitor, but they provide a superior value and they know it? What, what are okay. what are some of the um, you know you never want to disparage a competitor, uh, <laughs> but how do you do you up talk yourself? To oh, I like that up talk. Yeah. By the way, I really like your book too. This is a great book. And you you this book. I don't know where you come up with the stuff, but it's just has a ton of really interesting, I, I, I would call them tidbits and tactics. Um, so you're very dialed into the, you know, the nuance of sales is what I love. And what you just said is exactly what you don't want to do. What you said not to do is one of our main points. You know, it's one thing if you're the Lowe's Coronado and the Hotel del Coronado, you know, you're both luxury hotels and 
one is more historic and you know etc but when you're you know uh, I don't want to pick on any brands because you know I would say Motel 6 is somebody's Ritz Carlton but if you're if you're an economy brand if you're a luxury brand and let's do extremes here a luxury brand and someone is saying you know the economy brand is half price um, you know you don't want to say well they don't have a pool their pool is dinky it's not heated you know bring it back to what you have that you need you know brand X is good here's what's unique about us you know have you had a chance to look at our reviews we take great care of our guests we have a fabulous uh, housekeeping staff here are you gonna have uh, much time to enjoy the hotel and here's good things about us so focus on your strengths um, you know the, it's not about, once again, better to lose the sale through being honest. Maybe they are on a budget, but next, you know, they're bringing their kids to SeaWorld and they're going to spend, they're going to draw a pump probably today, three grand for a week easily. But, you know, so they need to stay at an economy hotel. But next time when it's the wife and the, and the husband coming for the anniversary or the same sex couple coming for the anniversary, um, and it's just the two of them. You know, they might spring for that extra money. So, or they might at least have, you know, I'd rather see them lose the sale. And that's one of the problem with OTA bookings. People hmm. don't have their expectation that they show up and it wasn't what they expected. And if you read one star reviews at hotels, a lot of them say I booked online through the third party by name and it wasn't what I expected. You know, So part of it is losing the sale when it's not a good match. Hmm. Unvarnished truth is a beautiful thing. It, it sets oh, the right expectations. Word. <laughs> people, people come and they, they enjoy themselves. They leave better reviews. They come back. Um, I don't want to monopolize the conversation. I, if there's any questions people want to ask, uh, please just put them in the chat um, because we're, we're very fortunate to have this time here with you. Uh, Round in the corner. So let's let's see what else we got out there. Yeah. But, uh, I love uh, love HSMAI, love San Diego. It's you know I have a lot of a uh, lot of travel throughout California. I, I love the West Coast. Um, I'm kind of an East Coast rooted guy, but with a lot of family on this side of the continent. But beautiful out there. So well, uh, and people kind of you know getting back into the story. People that that live here, they know what to recommend to their friends and family, and you know you're you're helping them use that knowledge when when somebody calls to get out of technical support mode and get into the yeah. you know get to know you uh let me help you mode that's really good you also mentioned that if people don't get out of that mode that siri and, and yeah. they're going to get replaced uh, a lot of hotels are investing in chatbots and okay. ai what do you think about all that Great. I love that subject, you know, and it's interesting because I did mention earlier hotelmarketing.com. Today's issue has a link to a story from the Harvard Business Review, and I believe the title is it's probably on their homepage, hotelmarketing.com today. Um, something about, you know, when is, when is technology not good or when not to use technology for customer service? And the main, and it was about, you know, customer service in general, but the main takeaway there that they said, which gave me a lot of validation was use high tech, but when that guest, that customer, that guest in our case needs somebody, make it real easy to get to them. And yeah, we should have Siri, Cortana and Alexa. Well, it will actually be their first cousins. You know, it'll be, let's see, um, it'll be Larry from Lowe's or Connie from Comfort Inn, and, you know, your chat bot coming up eventually talking to you with the avatar maybe but when somebody needs to talk to somebody you know why do we not have this by the way why don't we have a pop-up video customer service okay and we have online chat but why don't we have an agent sitting there with pop-up camera the technology is already out there there's a couple of companies already doing this but not in hotels we are in the space and time business Okay, we sell space for time. <laughs> we better be good at service because at the end we get them nothing but a bill under the door or in their email nowadays because we don't put it under the door. But you better make it about the experience. And if, why don't we have 
a click to video chat button that, you know, and, and the funny thing is a lot of uh, millennials support this. My, my nephew is 38 now. Let's see. Yeah, 38. He's one of the first millennials, I believe. Most people say 1980 and on. And I, uh, he lives out in Colorado. He's typical, stereotypical millennial. By the way, I love millennials. And I think millennials uh, really get some unfair bashing <laughs> on social media, especially the millennial job interview viral thing going around. My best employees, many of them are millennials. But I asked my nephew, you know, he's typical millennial in that he's, he's not married. He has a long-term girlfriend. He has three dogs, you know, he's has a lot of fun, no stress. Maybe he's got the right idea, but, um, you know, he goes away with his buddies. He goes skiing in the winter. He goes whitewater rafting in the summer up to the, up to the mountains. And I said, do you plan the trip? Cause he's kind of a leader and he, he knows a lot about travel. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, well, do you ever call? Do, yeah, I do it online. Like, really? You don't ever call? He's like, you know why we never call? Because you never get anybody on the phone. It's just press this, press that. And when you do get somebody, they're in a call center in another country and they have no idea what you're asking about. That's why they don't call. Mm -hmm. You know, so now the post millennials, which is my kids, which are Gen Zers or I generation, some call them, 19 uh, in the late 90s, nine, late 97 and 99, they have been raised on video chat. Okay. So, they, and they love face to face. My daughter actually um, banks. I got her set up with TD Bank when she went off to New York City to college. And when uh, she had a couple of things come up with her account, there was a, a deposit that we couldn't identify. It was a re turned out to be a refund from the university. And I was like, Julia, have you called? No, I'm going to go in. Oh, a couple weeks later, had you called yet? We need to know if it's real money we can spend on your tuition. No, I'm going to go in. She wanted to go in, you know, mm -hmm. and she did. She went in to TD Bank. If you ever been to TD Bank, they have people to help you when you need to be helped. Now, she deposits her check through the uh, take a picture of your check app, which I do use the ATM, but I just cannot take a picture and throw the check away. You know, so she <laughs> uses automation. But when she needs something, she goes in. And at TD Bank, there's somebody there, you know, and uh that's what we need. Yeah, we need Siri, Cortana, and Alexa, but we need talk to somebody right now or even better, video chat. Right. Um, you, you bring up the bank example, and you I always get aggravated when I call the bank because I have to go through 10 steps and wait for like a minute and a half just to yeah. talk to somebody. And that's all I want to do is just operator, operator, <laughs> operator, you know, and it, it really irks me because they have my money. Right. So. And, and, and when you say operator now, it says, I don't understand that response. We don't understand yeah. that. Like you trust zero invalid entry. You know, it used to be like zero was like a sure way to get somebody. Not anymore. Right. So so you're saying that if we can just cut through all that so that instantly they can get somebody that is going to be the competitive advantage that gets yeah. somebody to choose hotel A over hotel B. Be high tech. Embrace it all. You know, have the local information app, but when somebody needs you, you know, uh, the, the same article, the, Am the um, Harvard Business Review article actually referenced the Amazon store that opened in Seattle. I'm actually going to speak at a conference in Seattle on Thursday. Maybe I'll get to go to the Amazon store, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm sure everybody heard. I know you've heard you're, you're dialed into what's going on where you just go in and <laughs> put yeah. stuff in your bag and walk Thanks. out. Right. <laughs> it was pretty weird. But. They're also staffed with humans. So if somebody has a question, you know, there's people all around to answer that because they're not sitting there going, oh, how's your day going? Good. That's good. Ching, ching, ching. Right. They're actually there to talk to you. So so use people for a much higher strategic function than don't eliminate them. operating the cash register. Yeah. Don't just don't just embrace tech to cut costs and push people away to tech, because guess what? You will be a commodity hotel world. Your brands will become obsolete. Rooms will be distributed through OTAs. Owners of brand, owners of hotels will wonder why do we need a brand? You know, they just sell us through Expedia. Differentiate yourself with people. You can't copy people. You can copy a white remote control in a sanitized wrapper. You can copy a curved shower curtain. I'm going mm -hmm. back to amenities added in this decade. This uh, 
yeah, this decade pretty much or this century. You know, you can copy having a, a, a being able to to Chromecast from your device to watch your Netflix on the TV, but you can't copy people so easy. And when you when you read reviews on TripAdvisor, that's what comes out a lot of a lot of the times. You know, we were having a hard time. The radiator was on the fritz, yeah. but Susan came up and she helped us move all the stuff. And it, it's it's all about how people bent over backwards and went above and beyond to provide service. Um, that really is it, yeah. right? Or not. You know, it is funny because I read the one stars and the five stars when I'm a potential guest. And exactly what you said, Jeremiah, there it's all about the people there too. You know, I asked for help at the front desk and they were not helpful. Nobody followed up. They didn't pick up the phone. It rang and rang. You know, in the five star reviews, I had a problem, but this guy, the, this young woman at the front desk, she was awesome. You know, so there you go. But uh, I hope this has been helpful. And uh, if there's any other questions we have, I'm glad to field them. If um, we don't have any more questions right now, maybe we can do just a, a last word. Sure. Um, I would love you to talk a little bit about service excellence. Um, you know, maybe a, a quick story from your book. Um, that was something that I really, it really inspired me. And I think about that a lot. Can well, you tell people? Well, I, I was quite impressed that you read it because I know you're a copywriter. And uh, by the way, it made me embarrassed for the typos I later found. <laughs> but um, I, I appreciate you actually reading it and being generous with that comment. But gosh, uh, I guess, you know, I, the main story I will tell you was when I grew up, I worked from age 9 to 20 and I worked for my parents. My parents were uh, small time entrepreneurs. And I worked for mom in the Kennedy craft shop. It was probably the size of, a, you know, a 10 by probably the size of a hotel room. <laughs> but I watched her grow that business. And I was fascinated by business. I guess I'm a natural born entrepreneur. And I watched her grow that business. You know, she started it because we needed money. My dad had a good job, but we had four kids and there were some medical issues that, you know, just killed the budget. Um, we didn't have the safety nets we had, uh, you know, in the early 60s, that legislation wasn't passed. And so uh, it was a big hole to deep out, dig out of. Mom started the craft shop and I watched her grow that business, you know, from age nine to 20. And when I was 20 as a student in college, first in my family, you go to college because of that craft store, you know, they sold it and they moved on. And that's when I started in house house. But as I share in the book, you know, at the start of my book and the end of my book starts in mom's craft shop. And it was all about the people. It had a little bit to do with crafts, but a lot to do with people. And there was a lot of other craft shops in my hometown, Lexington, Kentucky. But people would drive literally 20, 30 minutes, which is a long way in a town of 60,000 people in the 1960s. And they would drive all the way across town, passing two or three other stores. Because when they walked in, there was Mrs. Craft. Hey, how are you today, Sally? Hello, Jane. How's your dog? Did your kid make it back from the military deployment in Vietnam? You know, she knew everybody's story, who who needed a little talk on their troubled marriage, who had a grandbaby, you know. So uh, and then later I worked for the Marriott family and I watched the Marriott family because they had 125 hotels when I started at the Lexington Marriott Resort Griffin Gate in 1981 as a bellman. And actually, I started in uh, banquets and doorman briefly. And then I worked mostly as, uh, you know, the bellman and the bell stand jobs. But they did the same thing. You know, so um, I guess I'll end today with, you know, what mom always said. And she didn't do her, you know, high flute consulting, you know, uh, suit and tie talk. She basically called it being a people person. But, you know, I, I, I sophisticated up a little. I, I up consulted, <laughs> to use your term. But, you know, it's about 10 percent to do with crafts and about 90 percent to do with people. She didn't say it that way. She said it's all about the people. But today, the hotel business has maybe maybe 20 percent to do with rooms. OK, because in your comp set, everybody charges the same because they're all getting the same hotel gents, 360 star, all the B.I. we have out there. And they're all we're all copycatting. You know, we might have some advantages with location. It's about 20 percent at the most to do with those things like rate and place and about 80 percent with the people. 
So, so it really, it comes down to when somebody calls you, that's your, your, that's your opening. That's your in yeah, so. to be a person and show that you're a person and get to know their story and, and show that you care, the show that you know the property, show, show that you want their business. Um, that's, that's a huge opportunity compared to just a, a regular online booking. Hey, that was a great segue back to our theme <laughs> because at yeah. the end of the day, when somebody calls, imagine what it costs to get a pay-per-click. Okay, and we have a phone call, all right? We probably paid for a pay-per-click. And now the phone is ringing, okay? And someone wants to talk to us. And what do we do? We put them on hold. We transfer it off site, even if there's someone up, even if they ask for in house on site, uh, mm -hmm. or we rush through them. You know, if you're busy, just say, hey, you've reached the front desk. I'm happy to help you. I'm helping some other guests. Are, are you going to be at your phone? Oh, yeah, call me back. I'm glad you're there. Mm -hmm. Somebody will call you back, even if it's an hour, but they're there, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, why not? You know, talk to people. How hard is it? Have a conversation. Ask some questions. Find out their story. You know, unmask what's behind their plans. And then tell them the story of them enjoying your hotel, resort, you know, whatever it is. So I hope this has been helpful. I, uh, I appreciate all the work you're doing, you know, for HSMAI. I know you have a lot of other things going on. And here you are, you know, taking time out to do this. Well, for well likewise. 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 And well, it's good press for me, so I appreciate the publicity, but you're the volunteer. So thank you very much, Jeremiah. And I hope it's been helpful. It really has. I mean, you find out somebody's story and you find out, oh, you have a baby. Oh, would you like a crib? We can bring a crib up to the room. You can't find that on the website. You, you can't. can't find that on the days. That's a differentiator. And, and um, they're gonna say thank you. That that was really help it helped. How old is your baby? Oh, <laughs> now I say my baby is 18. <laughs> All good. Well, I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's thank you so much for sharing your experience, your stories. Uh, and I want to have this conversation rolling on. So if anybody's listening to this uh, and you would like to continue this, uh, where, where can they reach you? Where can they, they uh, pick your brain, I guess? If you just Google search Doug Kennedy Hotel Training, you can find me, or it's uh, my website is Kennedy, with two N's, KennedyTrainingNetwork.com. So uh, there is a Douglas Kennedy famous fiction author. That's not me. <laughs> but if you add the word hotel, I'll usually come up. And I'm always happy. You know, I get uh, all the time emails from random people, like students. Uh, a lot of people help me, uh, so I'm always here. To help others. That's right. We'll pay it forward. Appreciate it. Uh, All right. Thank you so much, Doug. Thanks so so much for everybody for listening in, and uh, looking forward to talking with you again soon. All right. Be well, Jeremiah. Okay. Take care. Likewise.